Oh, listen to this, Francie. Listen here. Can you hear this? A bomb! Ah! It's not a bomb, it's a watch. <laughs> listen. Do you, know, do you know what that is, Franz? It's a gun. It's time. Time. Don't drop it. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. Hmm, we think we're in the dark. <laughs> it's a stopwatch, Franz. He's counting the seconds. <laughs> did you like it? Yes, you can cock and zicky and tick a cock. With the big iron cheek. Yeah. The big counters counting, you see it. Because we are going to harness. And that stops. And then we reset. Press it again. There it goes. <laughs> Listen. You need to quit. Let's put it away. Say, Papa, stop watch. The big clock. <laughs> yeah. Come, let's put it away. Okay. How do you explain the concept of time to a three-year-old? The road ahead, it twists and turns And the sun beats down and it burns But I keep, keep on pushing through My name is Wanda Puchert and this is finding frequency. My feet tread down this beaten path and I keep, keep on pushing through. Cause I get up and I may fall right back down. Quick update from Poland. So today is the 16th of April and we are mandated by the Polish government to wear masks when we go out in public. Strange, I would never have thought that day would come. And here we are. And for me, for the first time in a very long time, I ventured outdoors. It was a bit like a vampire, scared of the sun. And I went to McDonald's. Yes, I visited this hallowed American institution to grab myself a nice, and it was delicious, flat white. I could not wait any longer for a coffee made by someone else. Jokes aside, it was strange going out because for many, life continues. For many, public transport is still the only means to travel around. And seeing people scattered in strange queues with masks on, waiting for the bus, seeing old ladies walking with face masks on, I would never in my life have thought that this would be the reality for Poland. Now I know I'm being very selfish because I'm speaking about Poland, but this is my immediate reality. And as an African who moved to Europe, the land of milk and honey, it's very strange to see this. So in keeping with my American theme for today, I want to introduce to you the voice of someone who's become a very close and dear friend of mine in a very short period of time. Hi, this is Terry Mead, and I am based in Redwood City, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've never lived anywhere else. But through the power of technology and connection, I know Werner through Fei Wu and her content creator mastermind. And I have to say that I feel truly blessed to have been introduced to and have been able to connect with Werner um, one day we will be able to meet in person and enjoy a coffee, which he seems to be addicted to, or a cocktail together. Um, in the meantime, while we're sheltering in place in, uh, in the Silicon Valley, we've been doing this since March 16th. I am sheltering in place with my husband of almost 24 years, Zeke, my 15-year-old second child, Ray, and then my son, who's almost 19, um, who's a freshman in college, and his girlfriend, Sophie. My son is Adam. And this has been a really interesting learning experience. Um, the five of us together 
It's uh, cozy in our 1,650 square foot house. Um, we have a nice yard, both front yard and backyard, but we haven't been able to use it because it's been rainy. So it's uh, been interesting how we've been able to learn how to kind of cohabitate together again since our son we plucked out of the dorms uh, on March 14th, and then his girlfriend came on March 16th. And I have to say that I feel truly blessed that she's here with us because she's helping to provide a buffer and also make it so that we don't go back to the dynamics that we had before Adam went off to college. And it allows them to have some independence and also to, um, you know, be treated more as adults. They're trying to do the distance learning thing. So in terms of I hit the wall about a week and a half ago because up until then I was like, I'm just going to work. I'm just going to keep going. I'm a consultant. I'm an expert witness. I do. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, a podcast. Um, I'm a startup advisor and an angel investor. I do a lot of different things. And I thought if I just keep doing all that I'm doing, oh, I'm an author of the book Piloting Your Life and I'm working on noodling over ideas for my next book. And I thought if I just keep going, going, going and working 24 seven, that everything will be just okay. And I realized a week and a half ago that that was delusional. And so I've been spending my time trying to prioritize and focus on those things that are most important. I'm also, I've also decided that working seven days a week is not healthy even in normal times, I'm carrying the majority of, I want to say, the emotional load here in my house, trying to make sure that everybody is staying sane, um, emotionally healthy. Um, I recently celebrated my 50th birthday, so making sure that that was, you know, there was some fun stuff around that. My son's 19th is coming up. We have Easter and, you know, just making sure that we're planning meals and time together and that our house is happy and, you know, um, just thinking through all the logistics around that. So in addition to, you know, working and doing all the stuff, I'm carrying that emotional load and then feeling the weight of what's happening in the world and understanding what the ripple effects are and the repercussions of what we're going through and just kind of seeing how that's all going to potentially play out. It's it's heavy. And so I'm trying to cut my day off at about five o'clock. I start it, you know, I get on the computer somewhere between 6.30 and 7.30. And I'm trying to make sure that by five I'm done. And um, I'm not working all hours of the night. I will check my email, but for the most part, I'm not checking everything. So I'm also learning to make sure to keep my anchors in place um, to keep me stable. And that's daily meditation, some yoga, trying to get on the treadmill a couple days a week. Um, I do morning pages, I, you know, I journal for a couple of pages. And instead of shredding those every day, I'm actually keeping those. And I'm writing down like what our day in sheltering in place is, because um, this is a historic time. And uh, that's another thing is for, for me to make sure that I'm sharing that message and planting seeds of optimism out there with my um, with my viewers, uh, my reader of my newsletter, um, and all of that is the importance of not only allowing yourself to feel whatever it is you're feel feeling, but also putting out there that there's an opportunity for change and goodness and creating a new normal. Um, and that's one of the things that I've really learned is that that is one of the one, the one of the gifts that I can put out into the world right now. I'm not a healthcare worker. I do work in life sciences, but I'm not a healthcare worker. I'm not leaving the house because my son's working in a grocery store. His girlfriend is babysitting for a family. Um, so in terms of risk balancing, I'm not going outside. I'm not cooking for other people. Um, we are trying to support a local economy as much as we can. But um, the one thing that I can put out into the world and contribute is um, putting out basically pathways towards uh, a better future, a more um, equitable and balanced um, society that works more, works better for more of us. And I think that's one of the big lessons. Um, if there's time for this, Warner, one other thing is it's become glaringly obvious that here in the United States that we have completely um, abandoned those that are most vulnerable. And so the discrepancies and disparities between the haves and the have nots, I'm hoping 
that our society learns that we can't do that, that some of these things don't respect borders, they don't respect socioeconomic um, classes, and that when we don't take care of the most vulnerable in our society, that, um, that we all lose. And I'm hoping that more people realize that. The other thing that I'm seeing um, is that those people with kids are really struggling right now. And this may be a throwaway year for some of the students, uh, whether they're in second grade or they're juniors in high school um, or if they're in college. They're, they're definitely going to be some long standing effects as a result of what we're seeing in the world. And I'm seeing a lot of people who don't have kids who are not seeing that there's a, a huge burden on um, the, the families, the, the, the working parents who do have kids. It's, um, it's some of these things that become, I've learned that have become glaringly obvious as a result of this entire experience. But I'm, I still remain hopeful and optimistic that with this big reset, with the slowing down, that, um, that some of these disparities that are being highlighted, that somehow we can start taking steps towards um, making a more equitable and just um, and fair society uh, across the board, and that somehow we can um, break down the centralization of power and money, at least here in the United States, um, to create something and create paths towards, you know, happier, healthier society. So Werner, thanks for doing this uh, project. Um, I absolutely adore you, as you know, and I look forward to continuing to listening to Finding Frequency and hearing what um, your friends from around the world have to say about what's going on. So thanks for doing this. Thanks for sharing, Terry, and especially that last part. I saw a quote today, and it goes something like this. Maybe we shouldn't try to go back to normal, because normal was part of the problem. I'm sure you, too, have many things that you miss and can't wait to get back to. But there are definitely a whole bunch of stuff that we can do without. And perhaps now is the time to try and fix it. Maybe I'm being overly optimistic. But what is the alternative? Thanks for listening.